Good morning again. It's so good to see you all. And thank you, Sandy, for serving as our liturgist this morning. Would you please pray with me? O oh, Holy One, come to us now in this often hurried Christmas season. Center our spirits and quiet the inner chatter that we may hear your word for us this day. And, oh, dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to begin this morning by offering some background about our Advent worship theme this year. I believe that it was back in October when Josh and Tim and I sat down together to begin planning for the Advent and Christmas seasons. And as I recall, it was Josh's idea to frame the title of the sermon series in the form of a question. Because a question, of course, invites a response. A question is invitational. A question encourages reflection and introspection and wonder. And so, the Advent theme that we came up with, as you may know by now, is the following question. How does a weary world rejoice? How does a weary world rejoice? Now, you'll notice that each Sunday of Advent, our sermon titles are also in the form of a question. Last week, you may recall that the title of Reverend Tim's sermon was, How Do You Wake Up in a Weary World? And the title of my sermon this morning is, how shall we prepare? How shall we prepare? As we contemplate this theme of Advent preparation this morning, I'd like to share a reflection that I came across recently. It was written by the Reverend Michelle Torian, who is a UCC pastor and writer, and I believe a blogger as well. She wrote this following prayer. Oh God, I'm swimming in Christmas prep. The cards aren't ready to send, only half are addressed. Shopping? Wow, I'm not even close to being finished. And don't forget about the lunch with coworkers next week and dinner with friends the following weekend and a couple of other holiday parties in the neighborhood. I also signed up to volunteer this Thursday and the following Saturday. And wait, wait, the tree. The tree isn't even up yet, let alone the lights and the ornaments and the rest of the household Christmas decorations. Then there's the wrapping, of course, and the cookies and the caroling, not to mention the everyday work around the house and the office. Stop and breathe. Oh God, in my preparation, I am forgetting to prepare myself, to open my heart in new ways, and to be silent and still. Instead, I keep moving, falling into the busy trap being less intentional, less relational, and more cynical. Open me, O oh God, to the freshness of the day, to the love that is right in front of me, and the presentness of this very moment. Amen. Amen. I wonder if any of you can relate 
to Reverend Torrigan's sentiments in this Advent prayer and reflection. Anyone? <laughs> any, any hands there? Yes, yes. <laughs> I certainly do. In our household, we still haven't put up a Christmas tree yet, and our shopping is far from done. And those Christmas cookies that I intend to bake, yeah, well, that, that's not going to happen this year. I can tell you that. And I'm sure we'll take another family photo, but not in time for Christmas. I'm thinking it will be more like June when we can all be together again. At this time of year, it is so easy to get caught up in this unhealthy cycle of over-planning and overworking and overdoing and overspending and overextending ourselves. Isn't it? Isn't that true? But here's the thing. On this second Sunday of Advent, when we are already distracted by the commercialism and the consumerism of the Christmas holidays, John the Baptist, or as I like to refer to him, John the Disruptor, just abruptly shows up in our gospel story today and once again in our lives. And what does he do? Well, in the way that only John the baptizer can, he stirs the pot and he disrupts the status quo while proclaiming a countercultural message then and a sobering message for us today. Our Advent reading this morning from the first chapter of Mark doesn't begin with the beloved birth narrative that we find in the beginning chapters of both Matthew and Luke. Nor is it a poetic hymn that alludes to Jesus' origin, as in the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In fact, in fact, the story of Jesus' birth, as you may know, is not found in Mark at all. Rather, our Advent reading for today are these opening eight verses of the Gospel of Mark from chapter 1. The first three verses of which hearken back to the Hebrew prophecies about preparing for the Lord. But then the scene shifts to John the baptizer preaching to the people and preaching to us about repentance and confession. So in this very short pericope, we encounter these strong themes of preparation and repentance and forgiveness and confession. Now, preparation certainly seems like an Advent theme as we prepare our hearts for the birth of the Christ child once again. But who wants to focus on repentance and confession during this Advent season? This Advent season, which is often described as the most wonderful time of the year. Aren't repentance and confession Lenten themes instead? As I was engaging with our gospel reading this past week, the message that emerged for me was pretty clear. Preparing for Christmas always offers us plenty of meaningful tasks and activities that keep us busy and occupied and distracted and maybe even exhausted <laughs> as we go through our list and check off several items on that lengthy, lengthy list. That is 
so true, I think, for most of us. I have to believe. But in our text for today, John the Baptizer, who seems to always have a countercultural message for everything, reminds us all that preparing for the coming of the Lord is also an interior experience in which we are called to examine our hearts and seek reconciliation and practice forgiveness and extend grace and make peace and do justice and build community and bring healing to the world while we worship and prepare once again for the coming of our Lord and Savior. There's one more significant theme that emerged for me in our gospel reading that I do want to mention. And that is that John didn't go to the people to baptize them. Rather, the people sought him out in the wilderness. They went to him. They took the initiative because they were yearning for something more and something deeper. It was a bold act of faithfulness on the part of the people of God, and it was what they did to prepare the way of the Lord. And so, I ask you again, how shall we prepare? How shall we prepare? And how will you prepare? I'd like to close this morning with a well-known and powerful Advent prayer that I've been meditating on in recent days as a way of preparing my heart for Christmas. It's from a well-known book, The Mood of Christmas, and it was written by the late Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman, who, as you may know, was one of the mentors of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Let us pray. May the sounds of Advent stir a longing in your people, O God. Come again to set us free from the dullness of routine and the poverty of our imaginations. Break the patterns which bind us to small commitments and to the stale answers we have given to questions of no importance. Let the Advent trumpet blow. Let the walls of our defenses crumble and make a place in our lives for the freshness of your love, well lived in the spirit and still given to all who know their need and dare receive it. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>